I've run a successful backup in Backup Exec 21, and now I want to do a file restore. So in this video, I'm not going to do a complete server restore. That's going to be in a different video. However, I do want to restore at least one of the files just to show how that goes. So I'm in the Backup and Restore tab, as you see at the top. And if I click on Job Monitor we can see that my backup was successful there, along with an inventory and catalog done earlier. If I click on storage, my backup is online. So we know that everything worked the way it was supposed to. Now I'm going to do a file restore. So underneath my backup and restore tab, I can right click and I can choose restore backup sets created by this job. I can also click the button at the top here that says the same thing. I have several options. I can restore a SQL database because I do have SQL Server running on here. I could do a complete restoration or I could just restore files and folders. I'm going to choose the files and folders and click next. Now I have the option for backups to a point in time or from a backup set. Now in a simple backup and restore of just files, these basically mean the same thing. So I'm gonna see the same files. Files and folders located through search allows me to search by name for a file and it'll look for that particular one. So that's actually very handy to have. I'm just gonna choose the top option, click next. And this is gonna show me all the files that were backed up and the date that they were backed up as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand INET pub and I'm going to restore this test one folder. But first I'm going to delete that test one folder from my hard drive in Explorer. So I'm going to right click on it. I'll choose delete and now it's gone. And I've gone ahead and checked the box for test one. I'll click next. And I'm going to put it to the original location. Now it does give me the option if I want to keep the file where it is to move it to a different location, but I'll have to choose the drive and the path to get there. But in this case, I don't need that. So I'm going to choose the original location. If the file is still there, I can choose to overwrite the file if it is older. And I'm going to restore files with their security information. So what that means is if I had in the security tab certain rights to certain people rather than just rights to everyone, then it will restore that as well. And that's always a good idea. And in most cases, you do want to restore the junction points, mount points, etc. Otherwise, you may end up having a different looking restoration of the file structure. Now, in this case, it wouldn't matter. But if you have a very complex file structure, things got moved around since you have done your last backup, then you need to decide, do you want it put back the way it was? Or do you want it to just live with the new structure and just restore the data where it is now? If there was a disk quota in Windows, then you can restore that as well. There's not in this particular case. And then we also have the option to restore removable storage data for Windows 2003, which no one I know of is using anymore. So I'm going to click Next, and now I can run a command line before or after the restoration. I don't usually see a reason to do that, but it is a nice feature to have. And I can choose to schedule one to do the restore, and I'm going to choose to run it now. And now I'll choose Finish. And now the restoration will begin. We can see that it's actively going. It usually takes a couple of minutes just to get started. And in this case, it was much quicker. So it says that it is all done. Successful. So we'll go back into this folder and we see test one has already been restored. In upcoming videos, I will cover restoring a complete server as well as SQL data. So take a look at the playlist and stay tuned.